Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Pro Acoustics Tech Talk. I'm Nathan, and today we're going to talk a little bit more about sound masking, specifically sound masking versus noise canceling. Uh, what's the difference and uh, how can we make it work for you? All right, so we've done a few videos already about sound masking, but today we're going to address a topic that comes up quite a bit. What is sound masking in terms of noise canceling? Um, if you're looking to reduce noise distractions and increase focus and productivity uh, in your space, uh, you, you probably are wondering what the best way is to do that for you. Um, you know, We've gone over before how uh, increasing productivity and um, improving speech privacy is definitely of uh, utmost importance. So we need to kind of go over some of these different terms here. Um, so sound masking, sound masking basically serves to make speech and other nuanced noises unintelligible by introducing another less noticeable noise, normally a white noise or a pink noise or a specialized um, masking noise. Um, noise cancellation though actually adds a second calibrated sound to cancel out the first. This is using um, topics like phasing where basically you're taking a sound wave, inverting it, and then reapplying it to basically cancel out the wave itself. Um, and then we also have the term soundproofing, which uses uh, materials like acoustic panels or certain types of drywall, certain types of uh, ceiling tiles to kind of create areas where sound cannot be heard. Uh, obviously in an office it'd be great if uh, everybody's cubicle was soundproof somehow, uh, but it's not really practical from a cost effective side, also from an architectural side. So that leaves us with sound masking and noise cancellation to kind of figure out uh, how to improve our office spaces and other areas in that way. Sound masking uh, or white noise is oftentimes confused with sound cancellation. Um, sound masking and cancellation can uh, both help employees, customers, patients, clients, etc. Uh, more effectively cope with uh, kind of the surrounding noise, but there's definitely a difference between the two. So noise cancellation is also known as active noise control, and it kind of uses advanced acoustic concepts to electronically alter an incoming sound wave or to basically eliminate it altogether. Um, so with sound cancellation, like I mentioned, the sound wave is actually picked up by a microphone, analyzed by a processor, and then a speaker is placed in the path of the sound wave and broadcasts a mirror image, exactly the opposite, inverting the sound wave and then playing it back to you to thus effectively cancel out that sound. Uh, this is an effective way to kind of control environments where there are few frequencies to, uh, to work on. Uh, this is done in uh, airplanes, noise canceling um, headphones, also even in your car to kind of help eliminate road noise. Um, but it's not really a practical application for uh, open commercial spaces, especially big ones, uh, because this is going to require a lot of processors, a lot of microphones, a lot of ways to analyze the sound, a lot of individual speakers to kind of resolve this. And, and also to be effective, noise cancellation has to be calibrated to work during a specific range of frequencies. Um, that's why, you know, your sound masking or your, your noise canceling headphones may cancel out the sound of the airplane, but you can still kind of hear somebody nearby. That's because the frequencies are a little bit different that it's trying to cancel out. Uh, also, um, everything I just described with noise cancellation is really complicated. Those processors I mentioned are not cheap. Those microphones are not cheap. And it can also be very expensive uh, to implement and to maintain um, and to constantly be recalibrating to make sure it's working the way you need it to. With noise canceling and uh, sound masking, the problem isn't just that people are talking loudly. Uh, our brains actually recognize the pattern of speech, or what's uh, called by uh, linguistics or psychoacousticians as structured noise. Um, it's basically a noise that our brain kind of is has been taught to listen to. Uh, and no matter how hard you try to focus, your, part of your brain is always going to try and listen in on that. Um, so basically, in order to kind of combat that structured noise, uh, sound masking actually introduces uh, a sound, uh, something subtle like white noise or quiet ambient noise into the environment uh, and makes those surrounding conversations unintelligible because our brain is actually focusing in on the, uh, that masking rather than the actual structured noise itself. So the goal of any speech privacy system is to actually add enough sound to an area to cover up speech, yet also to be quiet enough to uh, be almost imperceptible. 
Um, it doesn't normally take a lot of masking to be added to a space to kind of help lower down some of that structured noise. And we obviously don't want to work in an environment or uh, have an environment in our doctor's office or anywhere else where things are so loud that nobody can focus or pay attention to what's going on. Um, so sound masking systems kind of help make things more acoustically uh, comfortable um, by uh, adding in that masking, that low level of base, uh, that low level of kind of base level noise. Uh, but it's also not so loud that you're going to get into OSHA violations or things like that. We're normally talking about very quiet levels that are being introduced. Um, sound masking also can be useful in um, working towards things like uh, HIPAA compliance and legal standards where we have to take efforts uh, to protect uh, speech privacy of clients, uh, of patients, and that kind of thing. So sound masking is basically a perfect option um, in that it's uh, relatively inexpensive. Um, it can be added very simply uh, and works great in open office plans, things like medical facilities, doctor's offices, cl patient clinics, call centers, banks, uh, hotels, military and government agencies, law enforcement, uh, even retail spaces and hospitality. We've added sound masking to a lot of different solutions, normally commercial in nature. Um, so basically, with sound masking, you can expect to uh, help create a comfortable atmosphere for your visitors. Uh, you can add ambient sound masking as well as background music if you want to. You can add the background music on top of your masking to kind of serve the purpose of uh, enhancing the overall ambiance of your space if you'd like. Um, and you can also even add paging into many sound masking systems if you need to be able to uh, page to individual office areas and that kind of thing. Um, so sound masking, once again, um, is great for um, adding all this speech privacy, but once again, is a little bit different from uh, noise cancellation. Uh, so we want to make sure that people don't quite misunderstand how that works. It doesn't make your neighbor's voice vanish, but it does serve the purpose to help cover it up to where you may be able to hear that Bill in the next office is talking, um, but you're not hanging on his every word. Uh, we've got a few different uh, speaker options here for sound masking, the Cambridge uh, QT emitters uh, and also the Pure Resonance Audio C3 with its sound masking card. Um, if we can help uh, design a system for your space or if you want to check out some of the sound masking solutions we put together, head over to our website at www.proacousticsusa.com. Uh, once again, I'm Nathan. Drop us a like, um, shoot down a comment down below, let us know you're watching. If I, if I can help with any other topics, definitely let me know. Thanks, guys.